What's going on and welcome to a hair tutorial reaction video. A new series, I don't know what to call it yet. Maybe comment below and tell me what you think I should call it. But today we are going to go through a hair tutorial and I, as a professional stylist since 1995, am gonna walk you through three simple questions. One, do I agree with their process? Two, what is the why behind what they're doing so that you can get a better understanding of exactly what is going on so that you can get better results with these particular steps? And three, kind of my final thoughts on the overall video and do I think you should pay attention? Okay, in today's video, we are breaking down Angie from the channel Hot and Flashy. We're gonna break down her video called Long hair over 50, my hair care routine. Now this is a very in-depth video that really goes deep into her whole process, everything she does to take care of her hair, not just a styling tutorial. She talks about how she makes it feel fuller and look fuller and thicker and all of the things. She talks about all the specific products that she's using and getting good results with. So I definitely am going to link this video in the description below so that you can go watch it in its entirety. I'm gonna break down some aspects of the hair tutorial part. So uh, with that said, let's dive into the video. Um, having long hair at 59 years old, Babe, come here. Uh, how old is she? I would say my age, 46. 59. Well. 59. I go start a new facial routine. Oh. You are not 59, you're... <laughs> she looks amazing. There's no way. You look amazing. People are dead set against it, and boy, did they let me know it in the comments below my videos. And, sorry, did you know what she... She just said that people give her a bunch of grief in her comments because she's got long hair at 59 years old. Oh, heck no. People stop, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna get into the whole breakdown here in just a second, but can we just start with this? I know that people think, especially stylists, that we think everybody needs to have their hair short. What you need to do is have hair that you like and feel confident in, period. Get over the idea that anything about society or that anyone should tell you, even myself, how long your hair needs to be. I talk a lot about different hair lengths and why I think certain people need to bring their hair to certain lengths based on face shape and based on all of the things, but at the end of the day, you need to ignore me and anybody else. If you feel most comfortable with having long hair or short hair, that's what you need to do. Do that. The cool thing about being over 40 is you start caring less about what other people think and you start 100%. doing what makes you happy. Yes. That's a cool thing about Yes. That's why yeah. she married me when she was over 40 because that's what made her happy. That oh. <laughs> But <laughs> back to the breakdown. The blow dryer that I use is my Dyson Airwrap. I love this guy. I bought it a couple years ago to review it and have never used another blow dryer since. Okay, so first things first, I get asked all the time what blow dryers or what hot tools I would recommend that I use. Um, and if you've watched any of my videos, you've probably seen a handful of reviews about Dyson products specifically. And you might also have seen the fact that I actually use them in the salon and I use them on purpose. Uh, are Dyson the only blow dryers and tools that I think function for anyone out there? No, they're not the only ones out there that function well. However, it is a scenario where you spend a lot on Dyson, but you also get a lot with Dyson. This isn't a situation where you're, you know, buying a Ferrari and getting the performance of a Honda. You're paying for a Ferrari and you're getting the performance of a Ferrari. I actually haven't used the air wrap yet. It's the only Dyson tool that I have not got my hands on. I've got the blow dryer and the straightener and I love them so much. I haven't seen a big need for it yet. If you do want to see me do a review on the air wrap, uh, go ahead and comment below. Let me know. And uh, yeah, Dyson. If you're listening. <laughs> anyway, let me just go ahead and do the rough blow with this. I put it on high heat and high air. I generally aim it down at my hair. Okay, this is key. She did a really good job on this. So aiming it down her hair is actually a really important step. The other option is to drop her elbow like most people would wanna do and actually dry the hair where the air is pointed up the hair shaft. This is helping her smooth her hair out from the get-go so she doesn't have so much to smooth out with the brush or flat iron or whatever she chooses to use afterward. So blow drying your hair down is actually a really important step. 
I usually blow it down in the front because I have like some pretty big cowlicks right in the front and I like to get those a little bit tamed. That's actually a very important step as well. So if you've got cowlicks that you're dealing with or trying to manage in the front, one easy way is to do what she's doing. I actually go further than that and tell people really brush your hair the opposite direction. You're really going back and forth with it. This is just helping to break that cowlick down a little bit, kind of work against it so that when you do decide to part it, the way that it's probably gonna part with the cowlick, it's not so dramatic and you can get a little bit more control out of it. Especially if you have bangs or shorter bangs, this is, to me is an absolute must step. So I'm glad that she brought that up in this because it's very important. And I blow it about, I'd say 85% dry. I love that she brought that up. So actually I get asked a lot, how dry do you get it? And people think that they, one, either need to start finishing their hair once it's 100% dry. And other people think that they need to start from the time that it's dripping wet because that's the only way they can get to smooth their hair out. Truth of the matter is, at about 80%, you can still get a very smooth polish on your hair. More often than not, your texture is probably going to allow you to get it to about 80% dry. Then you polish it off with a round brush. This is going to be a faster result because you're not trying to get it dry with the round brush. You're actually just getting it dry with the blow dryer like she's doing currently. And then you're just polishing it off with the round brush. However, if it's too dry, a lot of times it won't actually smooth out as well. So you really need a little bit of that moisture in there. Just not a ridiculous amount. She's going through this pretty quick, but if you notice how she mentioned that she brings her hair down in the front against that cowlick, this is exactly what she's doing right now. She's kind of bringing it one way, then she's bringing it the other way, then she's bringing it down. Again, that is an important step and she's doing it very well. I just do this, parting it on the side and flopping it over just to give it a little more volume on the top and I'll do the same for the back. That's actually a very important key as well. So she's bringing it off the way that she's not going to style her hair so that she can then let it fall back the other way. I talked about this in actually the last video, which I'll link right here, where Dominique was going through this and she was actually brushing her hair the opposite direction of the way she was gonna part it to let those roots cool down and then to get more volume in the front. That's the same thing that she's doing here. As long as you're drying those roots off the opposite direction that you want them to eventually style, it's gonna help create a little bit more of that root lift and root lift is part of what creates volume. It's not everything that creates volume. That's a whole nother video, but it's part of it. So it definitely gives you a little bit of a foundation for volume. I'm hoping it doesn't need to be said, but maybe it does. Clearly I am not a professional. I'm not doing like a laborious sectioning and round brush thing. I was never able to use a round brush and a blow dryer. I'm not that coordinated, but using one hand with this, I can get my hair so smooth and so sleek. It really has made all the difference in my hair. So Okay, so there's a little bit to unpack there actually. I, one, love the fact that she mentioned that she's not a professional and this is supposed to be taken, I guess, if you would say with a little bit of a grain of salt per se. I, the reason I think that's important is because many times people can actually start talking about what they do with their hair and the audience, it's easy for them to take that in a perspective of this is the truth and the only truth. This is how things work. And she's basically just reiterating the fact that for her, this is her experience and this is what's been working for her. And I appreciate that honesty. And I think that's very, very, very important for people to catch. I think it's also important to talk about the brown brush perspective that she's talking about and how hard it is to actually do it on your own hair. A lot of people ask me if these kinds of tools work. And the fact is I used to use the all-in-one airbrush as we call them back when I first started doing hair all the time in the salon. They were super popular. I will say that they're not going to smooth your hair out quite as well as using a round brush and a hair dryer. And the only reason for that is because with two tools, you're able to more effectively direct where the airflow is heading down the hair shaft, which again is smoothing that cuticle down, laying the cuticle down and smoothing the hair out. But with that said, if it's easier for you to actually use one unit and you can't use two tools at the same time, then that's a much better option than just not doing it at all. I do color my roots and do my highlights at home myself. Huh? She does, she does her highlights herself? Okay, just, this is completely kind of unrelated to the tutorial aspect of this, but let's just say I am not a stylist that thinks that people shouldn't do their hair at home. I created an entire masterclass that teaches people how to cut and color their hair at home. I'm 100% behind it. If you can do it, rock with it. More power to you. Good job. 
about them in lots of different videos. I actually have a video where I show you me doing my roots and my highlights. I'm actually going to link that video in the description below simply because she's doing such a great job on her hair that I think you should go check that video out. I haven't watched it. I can't verify what she does in it, but I can tell you right now that her hair looks really solid, so it's likely worth a view. How I do it, but for today, I'm just going to touch up the gray and you just take it and kind of color right over your gray roots. Can't really see what I'm doing very well. This is great because a lot of people are concerned about the damage in their hair and how often they have to get their hair colored. There's a lot of products like this out there. She talks a lot about different products that she uses in her video, so they all seem to work very well for her. I haven't tried them all, so I don't have a professional opinion on them, but it's kind of irrelevant in some cases because she's kind of giving you her own history with how they've been functioning for her and they work really well. So definitely check out the video and you can see what she's using. The great thing is, you put them on, they hide the grow out, and then you rinse them out the next day and they're gone. So it's not a big deal. So you're feeling like hair color is too much maintenance or it's just been too much maintenance. This is a great way to kind of spread that maintenance out over a longer period of time so you don't have to be in the salon every six weeks or every four weeks or whatever it is. All right, so I'll grab the comb. I usually do just two small sections around my face with my shortest little pieces of hair. So I just grab those and then I just take the curling iron and oh, I can't really see what I'm doing. Oh, no, but those aren't going to go in. All right, so I'm going to let those two fall out. They're going to be separate. I clamp it down low, leaving the ends out, and then I just roll it up to about there. And then so it doesn't crimp, I have to like open the clamp a little bit and just kind of let the hair slide through a little bit so it doesn't get so cramped up. Okay, it's important to note that first of all, one thing that she did really well was she left those ends out. Okay, that's actually very important so you don't get these little corkscrew curls at the end. But also, if you noticed the rate at which she pulled it through her hair, meaning basically how fast she pulled it through and how long she left it in her hair. She's taking very small sections in the front right now and her hair is on the finer side. So therefore, she can use a lower heat and she can do it a little bit faster or not leave it in the hair as long and still get a pretty solid wave or get a good result. If your hair is thicker or if it's you take a larger section, you might have to leave it in there a little bit longer, go a little bit slower or use a little bit higher of a heat to get that same result. This is where we have to draw that fine line of where that damage sits. So definitely pay attention to that, but she's doing a really good job. Now, as you can see, when we're getting to the back, she's taking a much larger section and a much denser section. So there's more hair in the back of our head than there is usually around the hairline. Not usually, always. <laughs> so she's taking a larger section and that section also has more hairs in it. So it's therefore denser. That means that that heat is not going to travel through that hair or heat that hair up in the same way that it's heating a small section in the front of her hair up. So she's gonna get a little bit looser of a curl there or a wave there, or she's gonna be forced to leave this in for a longer period of time to try to match the same amount of wave that she has in the front. But even if she decides to leave in for a longer time, because it's a curling iron, it's not going to hold the wave the same as a flat iron would. This is mainly because curling irons, when you wrap the hair around it, if you notice on the outside of it right now, that hair is not being heated up at the same rate as the hair that's sitting right against the iron. It's going to give some discrepancy in how efficient that is in creating wave. When you get to the front, it's such a small section that it pretty much all gets pretty close to the same temperature. Now flat irons, because you're actually clamping the irons down on your hair strand and it's heating from both sides, it's more efficient in the way that it's delivering that heat and therefore all of your hair is more likely to get to the same heat. That's gonna create a more even wave pattern and it's typically going to last and hold a little bit longer and more often than not, it's actually gonna be a little bit quicker. But with all that said, this for many people is an easier process to use a curling iron versus try to figure out the flat iron. So again, if that's what makes most sense for you, that's how you should do it. And she does a really good job at it. You don't have to worry about them being super perfect, about leaving the exact same amount of hair out at the end. Sometimes it can be longer, sometimes it can be shorter, sometimes you can roll it up higher, lower. It's the variety in the curls that really helps make them look a little bit more beachy. A hundred percent. I'm so glad she brought this up. She nailed this one. One of the things about curling irons that has it kind of lend itself to a little bit less of a natural wave appearance or a natural beachy wave look or a natural curl look is the fact that every loop around the iron has a tendency to be the same kind of curl pattern. 
naturally curly hair doesn't have exactly the same amount of wave in every single curl. There's a little bit of variance to it. That goes a long way to making something look kind of more natural and just soft. She's doing it a little bit different. So she's holding it a little bit longer in some areas. She's wrapping it up a little bit higher in some areas, a little bit lower in some areas. All of these things are kind of modifying the amount of wave that she's getting in the different sections, which is going to create a more natural look. Most people don't pick up on that. She nailed that one 100% and I'm really glad she brought that up because it's a big deal. And see, it looks great, but you can see there's a little bit more wave in some areas and a little bit less in other areas. And I think she did a really good job. So final thoughts. I think Angie did a really good job of a lot of explanation here. So there's a lot of things that she touched on that are really important that I think she did a fantastic job about. So should you go check out the video? Duh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Definitely go check it out. I also though think that you should go check her out purely because if you're unfamiliar with her somehow, she's very down to earth. Even through this video in specific areas, I love her kind of candid honesty about everything and there's really not too much hidden, it seems like. So I can appreciate that just by itself. But aside from that, from the tutorial perspective, she did a really good job and everything is, is spot on. So I would definitely go check out the whole video. Now in her video, like I said before, she goes through a lot more insight into a lot of different aspects of how she gets her hair feeling fuller, feeling thicker, how she styles it. So I'm hitting on specific points about the video, but there's a lot more value in this video to be seen. So make sure you go below, check out her video, check out her channel, go over there and show her some love. And with that said, now I'm curious, if you have a particular video that you've seen or a beauty blogger that you kind of watch that you want me to do a reaction video to one of their styling tutorials, comment below and let me know who they are. I would love to go check them out. And Click on this and do the subscribe thing, all the stuff, you know, to YouTube stuff. <laughs> all right, you guys have a fantastic day. I appreciate you hanging out, and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.